was so triggered, I was so on the edge. One shot, I bet $1,000 and 30 seconds, was gone. We don't realise that what we are losing is actually real life money. I remember I spent so much, I had like zero in my bank account. I had to like borrow money from like my boyfriend then to like eat. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kairu. My name is Ryan and I'm 19. Hi, my name is Jasmine. Hi, I'm Javier. I'm Jen. I'm 23. The game that I play the most is Maple Star C. Every year, I'll come back at least once, like for a few months to play. But I came back during the COVID period more intensely than ever. I used like maple kind of as an escape, so there was COVID, right? So I didn't really go out, then I didn't buy new clothes, so I was like, okay, then why don't I just buy virtual clothes, right? Uh, why don't I just get good virtually? During the COVID period, like, I spent a lot on improving my character. Like the stats, having good equipment so that I can fight the bosses. I started mobile gaming right after NS when I could finally afford my own smartphone. Genshin, you gain control of a character or, or several characters actually in a party which you can swap around. You can see them fight, you can see them interact with the other characters in the world. It was love at first sight when I saw the new character called Ganyu. She has a very nice voice and I also like her personality. It's actually the same thing as people liking pop idols or celebrities. It's just the anime version. If you're very unlucky, it can set you back maybe several hundreds of dollars just to get the character. I was about 13 when I first just started Counter-Strike. What is it about Counter-Strike that you really like? The intensity of the game. For people who don't play the game, right? what are skins? Skins are something that make your in-game weapons look nicer and more attractive. So you can brag to people. People will be like, wow, we have this skin, wow, we have that skin. So you can spend $3 on a key and then you can open a loot box. Uh. You will get from a 3 cent skin, a plain green colour skin. Or maybe a $2,000 skin will be a very colourful one. Uh. When I was younger, I was saving my weekly allowance. I was like, not eating breaks so that I could go home on the weekends and open up cases. I started seriously gaming around 13. Yeah, I would always play with my friends. We would hop on after school, you know, spend three or four hours playing. Dota is really like uh, any competitive team sport, you know, like NBA or like, like soccer. You actually have to work together with your team. One person can be faking a push or acting as bait while another three or four teammates are waiting behind him. You know, so when the enemy takes the bait, they're ready to play the other side, you know, or flank them, go behind them. It's just like, you know, in NBA, one person can be doing a fake, you know, while the other guy runs to the centre for to be open to you know, receive the ball.
none of these items actually helped me in game. They were just for bragging rights. So I've seen people who spend thousands of dollars and not get anything back. Loot boxes are a tactic that game developers use to distribute content to players. The idea was that some players who didn't necessarily have like a ton of money to spend um, would be able to spend a smaller amount of money in exchange for a chance at winning a more valuable product. The way that you employ that tactic and the way that you use that tactic can be uh, very positive for players or it can be more negative depending on how it's implemented. As a developer, why do they use loot boxes? It's because it has unlimited upsides. A spender can spend $1,000, $2,000, or even $5,000. This is in comparison to subscription-based games such as World of Warcraft, where like, uh, you get $15 per player per month. It makes much more sense for the developers when it comes to profiting from the game. They'll tease you a bit by dropping you currency when you play uh, throughout the game. When the currency dries out, then they'll like poke you and uh, meddle around with you to try and get the premium currency in order to get like the stats you want. I think it's around $6 for one cube. A lot of people like did it like 100 times and didn't get anything, so that's already $600. There's a feeling of despair, but you just want to keep on going one more time, one more time. And then finally, when I, I managed to get, oh, the feeling of euphoria is like, it just engulfs everything. You see like your friends get them, you see like people post like that they got them and you're like, oh, it's possible for me. I get annoyed that I'm not getting it and I feel like I've really wasted money, I might as well spend more to get it, which makes no sense. I have a friend who actually spends up to 90% of his income on five different games. He's not even earning much, he's just earning like $1,900 a month. So many people use it from Sec 3 all the way until J2 for four years straight. That's what I was doing most of my time. I remember staying up till like 5, 6 a.m. two weeks before O-Levels just, just to do this. When I was like 16, 17, then I started branching out into third-party websites that allowed me to gamble straight up. For example, I could play roulette with the items. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to double it, I'm going to triple it. And I remember in an hour, I lost close to $1,000 just by putting all my items on roulette. Between 16 to 19, I used to play on a daily basis. Ah. There'll be good nights and bad nights. So I think on the bad nights, you always borrow money. And on the good nights, you would borrow people money. So it's a cycle. I think my lowest point was when my monthly salary came in, I had to like, give it away immediately. Yeah, I have no money to spend for myself for the rest of the month. The whole loot box system, it is a very, very big issue when it comes to uh, dealing with minors and people without self-control. And the worst part is that it, it, it looks like it's a game, so maybe kids are going to be telling their parents like, yo, mommy, daddy, can I have 10, 20 dollars? And the, the kids are going to gamble it off. Gaming and spending money in games in itself isn't a bad thing. Parents are actually using in-game money as a reward. And I think a lot of youths want that nowadays, right? I think if it's in a manner that is controlled, it's also a good way for parents to engage their youths about this in terms of uh, why they want this, how much do they intend to spend. Where we draw the line is when it gets out of control and they actually continue to uh, spend more and more even when they cannot afford it. I think when you're looking out as a parents for maladaptive behaviours, you try to see whether they are recreational activities that your kid or child used to enjoy and uh, maybe they stop enjoying. Eventually, it might even result in poor academic performance and all that. These are things to watch out for. There are tools and uh, resources out there, perhaps filtering software for both on internet and on, on, on mobile. Obviously, have a way to limit the time spent. Understand maybe the game that your child is playing, uh, the reasons why they play, uh, how the game works. That might allow you to uh, earn their respect. 
rather than coming from a parent's perspective where, you know, uh, you should stop, stop doing it, it's not good. You may not agree with it, but at least having that understanding will open up conversations and allow you to see how you can work something out together. Say it runs an online casting platform. Generally, youths are very open to share with us because I think we don't know who they are and they don't know who we are. And our counsellors are there to help them to find a way in which they can resolve what they're facing. Some game companies have also created safeguards. I think the unfortunate thing is that there are hundreds of games that have been created every day and, and some of these safeguards may not be uniform across the different game developers. One way is making sure that when players spend money on a loot box, they have the option to just buy that item outright. Another way to do it is that there's a certain set limit of time at which the player will definitely get the item that they're looking for or definitely get the high value item. Yeah, I think that as developers, we have a responsibility to our players to make sure that the way that we are monetizing is sustainable for both us and our player bases. We've observed that overseas, South Korea and China have also made their Game developers disclose the odds in their loot boxes and countries like Belgium have outright just banned loot boxes. Loot boxes, they should be regulated and they should not be for kids. Yeah, don't try because eventually uh, you're just getting yourself into a deep hole.